Building a model 1777 French flintlock hunting musket, part two, in cap front sight. William Hovey Smith, 2020. I'm an author, and I've done mostly outdoor books, but I also have an appropriate business title for the times, and that is create your own job security, plan to start your own business at midlife. What I advocate and show you how to do in this book is to start your own businesses at any age, at any place, at any time when you need to raise a little money, like perhaps right now, and show you in detail how to select what that appropriate business should be. We're resuming our bill on the model 1777 French 69 caliber musket that we are converting into a hunting gun for my novel, screenplay, and movie project, Father of the Grooms. Uh, this is where we are right now. I have trimmed the barrel by uh, approximately a foot, and we now have to fit the fore-end cap. Now the French fore-end cap is quite different from the usual ones on muzzle-loading guns and that it must be detachable. Usually these end caps are cast or permanently affixed, but this one is not. This is the end I cut off, and you can see how peculiarly shaped it is. It's tapered from both the top and the bottom. It's also thinned and rounded, and this is the shape I have to replicate on this end right here. But, we figured out a way to do it. To get this precision cut down from here to here, we have this flatbed sander here, which I mounted on my work table in my shop. Well, there is a problem. I have a vise on the corner of the table that you'll see in a minute, but that vise is much too low in order to have the gun pivot like this as I grind. Now I'm fortunate in having some holes already drilled through here and I have an appropriate size nut and bolt that I can fit through it. So if I can build something to elevate the gun then I can pivot like this on top of the flatbed sander and keep and maintain that angle something I would find very difficult to do free holding this gun uh, because of its very long length. Yeah, this is a big fella. It was even longer, but even shortened, yeah. It's difficult to hold and work on one end. So we're going to use some mechanical aid. And this is a block up of the system that I'm going to be using. Uh, these are scrap pieces, a uh, 2x4 that I had left over from previous projects, and they've already been used in one or two other constructions. And this bracket I happen to have here, and we have a suitable size bolt that will go through the holes already pre-drilled in the stock. We even have a wing nut that will fit it. So, we put a little block of wood here, same thing, screw these together, drill our hole here, run the bolt through the support, have it support the gun itself, and then we'll be able to move it up and down as we need to, to contact the sanding bed on the belt sander behind. So that is a general plan. We now have the gun and our homemade jig uh, ready to go on the flatbed sander. And as you can see, I have wing nuts and 
some rather large washers on there to keep from unnecessarily marring the wood. Plus this is soft spruce, so it'll not make much of an impression on this walnut, which we're going to sand away anyway, so that's not really a consideration. Uh, it looks rough, and it is rough, but it works. And that's the important thing. Now let's take a look at the sander and the angle of the grind. Now in a way, I'm very fortunate in having this tip fresh and cut off. If I had no idea what it looked like, I don't think I'd have a clue. But uh, now it's oriented the same way. And you can see the angles there are going to be roughly parallel, which is exactly what's desired. This is not a machinist shop, and nothing about this place is necessarily straight and true. But you can see when I press down that the ends of the stock touch uniformly, and that's exactly what is wanted. So this is about as close as I can improvise with what I've got. So we're ready to get started now. On this side we'll want to go all the way down to the beyond the barrel channel just very slightly. start on the other side and we're going to leave only about an eighth inch you can see that we're far from where we actually want to be in terms of width so our part which includes our front side of course and front barrel band will actually fit but inletting this piece of steel into very thin wood is an invitation for disaster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind this profile off into a straight line right across there. And that will be much easier to inlet and then secure it with a pin going through the wood here. Now that we have reprofiled this end cap here, this is going to be much easier to inlet because then I can just come up to this shelf right here or very near or cut a new one, but it'll be just a straight line cut down, which is much easier to manage than the complex shape of doing this extension here. So that simplified the problem. And now we need to reduce the wood in this plane. My question is what sanding surface is going to be easier to work on? Either this or my belt sander. I think I'm going to try it with a flatbed sander to start with and see how we do. We've gotten very close to where we need to be here uh, with the belt sander. So now we go to the Dremel tool to try to even out all the little small irregularities right around this area that are just too fine to work on the belt sander. But we're getting reasonably close to a fit. We've now completed the basic carving of our four end cap. It now replicates uh, our cutoff end here, but we're hardly home free. This, of course, is a four end itself, and it fits 
in this orientation. So, we have the problem of it fitting over the barrel itself and we have a little bit to remove, I think. Although it's pretty close. On our next video we'll actually work on the barrel and the metal and I'll show you some interesting and useful things to do even with the cut off barrel section that we had. But now this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. The engineers who designed this musket used a barrel that goes from an octagonal to a tapered round midsection and then round to the forward third of the barrel's length. Now this enabled the barrel to be cut down in the same end cap used should the front section of the barrel be damaged in combat. Now the end cap also contains a front sight. And this is stabilized by a pin to keep that sight from shifting and a wedged shaped section of the stock end to keep the barrel tight, both of which aid in the gun's accuracy. Now real attention was paid to make this gun shoot more accurately than similar muskets. For more information about my books, blogs, and more than 825 videos, go to my website www.hoviesmith.com. For information about my business books, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. To find out more about my novel, screenplay, and movie, go to fathertheGrooms.net. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless. See you in the movies.